Hello, in this presentation, we're going to talk about types of adjusting journal entries. When considering adjusting journal entries, we want to know where we are at within the accounting process, within the accounting cycle. All the entries, the normal adjusting entries have been done. The bills have been paid. The invoices have been entered for the month. We have reconciled the bank accounts. Now we are considering the adjusting process. Those adjusting journal entries are needed in order to make the adjusted trial balance so that we can create the financial statements from them. The adjusting journal entries being used to be as close to an accrual basis as possible. Those categories of adjusting journal entries, which will then have more types of adjusting entries within each category, will include prepaid expense, unearned revenue, accrued expenses, and accrued revenue. Let's consider each of these. We have the types of adjusting entries. First type, prepaid expenses. Prepaid expenses are items paid in advance. Although we have the word expenses in prepaid expenses, prepaid expenses is an asset. That can be confusing considering we have the word expenses, but the prepayment means we paid for the expense, we paid for something which will eventually be an expense However, it's not an expense under the matching principle, the accrual principle of matching until we have consumed it in order to help us generate revenue in the same time period. Meaning, in this case, we paid for it in some way. Either we bought it on like a credit card or on account or we paid cash, but we haven't yet consumed it. Therefore, we can't consider it an expense. Most common example is prepaid insurance. Whenever you think of prepaid expenses, first one you want to consider is insurance because by its nature insurance is always prepaid we always pay for insurance before we get coverage from the policy now it could be possible that we pay month to month and we're pretty close in time but more more likely most likely most of the time most businesses pay for more than just one month of coverage at a time half a year a full year multiple years and in those cases we have clearly paid for something before consuming it and we want to have an even allocation of those expenses throughout the use of the insurance rather than putting it all at the time of the payment. When we pay for it then, it's gonna be an asset. Other types of prepayment could be anything that we pay for in advance. So this is gonna be anything that we pay for that we will have an eventual expense, we will prepay it. A common one that you'll see in textbooks is gonna be prepaid rent because that's another one where we oftentimes might set up an arrangement for whatever reason that we're going to pay uh, for multiple months now and pay before we actually consume the the use of a rental property and in so doing we're going to end up with prepayment you can consider this happening with anything we can happen with the utility bill or any other expense that we have it's possible for us to pay for it before consuming it and make an agreement and arrangement for that if that were the case it would be an asset other types of prepayments that aren't quite as clear include supplies, doesn't have the word prepayment in it, but it's the same concept. Supplies is our introduction to inventory, and what we're doing is we're paying for something that we're going to consume in the future as we consume the supplies in order to help us generate revenue. Therefore, it's a prepayment because we bought something we haven't yet consumed, it's an asset until that time that it is consumed to help us generate revenue. We also have depreciation. Now we put depreciation here in the slide. It could also just be called property, plant, and equipment. Depreciation is typically what we call the adjusting journal entry related to depreciation and accumulated depreciation. But really we're talking about the prepayment happened when we bought property, plant, and equipment. When we buy something like equipment, just as a similar way as when we bought the supplies, we bought something that's gonna help us generate revenue in the future. According to the matching principle, we cannot uh, use that or show it as an expense until it has been consumed. We do that because we need an estimate, not with equipment expense, but with depreciation expense. So depreciation expense is integrally related to property, plant, and equipment. Property, plant, and equipment when being purchased is an asset for the same reason as supplies. The type of adjusting entry would be something like this always going to be a balance sheet account and an income statement account for all adjusting transactions this one is an example for prepaid insurance the most common prepayment and we're going to have insurance on the books here at twelve thousand in this case 
and we're typically going to write down the insurance because we're writing down the portion of that insurance that has been consumed over the time period now being reported, bringing the prepayment down to whatever it is. So the typical accounting department's gonna just put everything in the prepayments. We're gonna write it down and record what has been consumed by lowering the prepayment and recording the related expense. When we do that, it will typically bring down the net income. Same idea will be for when we record accumulated depreciation. It's gonna decrease the net book value of the equipment and we're gonna record the related expense, increase in expenses, bringing down net income. Supplies is on the books as an asset. We're gonna decrease the supplies and we're gonna record the related expense, which will increase the expenses and decrease net income. Next type of adjusting journal entry is unearned revenue. Payment received in advance of services performed. This is a case where we're talking about the revenue side rather than the expense side and therefore we're going to be considering the revenue recognition principle the accrual principle related to revenue and we're here we're talking about revenue we got paid for before we do the work unearned revenue can be a little bit confusing because we're talking one about something that many businesses don't often have meaning many both businesses get paid at the same time they do the work or they do the work before they get paid for example a bookkeeper or a law firm they're going to receive they're going to do work bill the client then get paid in the future for a, a food service a restaurant we typically do the work we get paid at close to the same time but some companies are going to get paid beforehand like a newspaper company going to get subscriptions before delivering the newspaper anything that's on subscription now so something like netflix or everything that's going to be subscription based typically will get paid before the service is performed and therefore we're going to have to record those payments not as revenue under the revenue recognition principle them not having yet been earned and therefore we're going to have to record it on the books as a liability so we got unearned revenue it's going to be uh, the account we will be using for that that's kind of like the generic name for revenue and it's going to be a liability account revenue that had not yet been earned and it's going to be a liability account not a revenue account not an income statement account we we also might have a down payment which is kind of a type of an unearned revenue and that if we sell a big product or we have a big project we have a construction project coming up uh, we might get money up front even though typically we would get paid at the end of the job we might say hey we need money now before the job is done or if we're selling a, a large product if we're selling cars and we need to make an order on the car before we deliver the car we might get a down payment that's going to be payment before we delivered the the vehicle and therefore we cannot recall it revenue even though it will be revenue in the future once we do the rest of the work until that rest of the work has been done uh, we could also have a security deposit if we think about rent not exactly the same because we think that we're going to give the security deposit back but it's possible we don't give the security deposit back depending on the condition of the of the premises and it's the same idea in that if we got money for the security deposit we we're going to debit cash and we can't credit revenue because we didn't earn the revenue we got to credit some type of liability account representing that we owe it back so those are going to be some examples here's the typical journal entry we've got unearned revenue on the books that the bookkeeper put on the books because when they're we're going to record the money they're going to put it on the books uh, as a debit to cash and a credit to the liability unearned revenue that's how we set up the system then in the adjusting process we will go in there analyze how much of that eleven thousand that has been put into the liability unearned revenue account has now been earned write that liability down to the amount we calculated it to be to have been earned we're going to do that with a debit here so we record the debit decreasing this and then we're going to record the related income now having been earned increasing the income in this case with a credit so we credit here increasing the amount of revenue increasing net income as we can see here next type of adjusting journal entry is going to be accrued expenses so accrued expenses are both unpaid and unrecorded as of the cutoff date and remember we're always thinking about as of the cutoff date trying to make the financial statements correct as of that final day of the month could include accrued wages 
This is gonna be the most typical example of accrued expenses, and we're gonna call it accrued wages. We could call it wages payable, that being the liability account. And what this means is that the, the, there's gonna be some accounts and wages is gonna be one of them that it just does not make sense for us to, to record wages on a perfectly accrual basis. Instead, we're going to basically record the payroll transaction closer to when we actually pay the payroll. Otherwise, to be in a perfectly accrual system, we would have to accrue the fact that we owe money and people have worked for us every hour, every minute, or even every second if we wanted to be on a perfectly accrual system. That would not make sense. Therefore, we're just gonna say, hey, let's be closer to a cash basis. Let's let payroll do what payroll can do in order to make things easy for payroll because payroll is diff difficult enough already. And then at the end of the month, we're just gonna make everything correct on an accrual basis as of the cutoff date. So wages payable always gonna be something that the cutoff date will not always land. It will never pretty much land on the same date as the payroll. And therefore there's gonna be some days that have been worked by the employees that uh, have not been recorded as expenses and we're gonna to have to record them. Same idea for accrued taxes. So taxes are gonna accrue as we earn money if we're thinking income taxes. Every dollar we earn, we have the silent partner wanting their share, Uncle Sam, and therefore we're gonna to have to record that, uh, that expense at some point as well. And there's nothing that really triggers that. So we're just gonna to have to make that part of our adjusting journal entry process and figure out how much is owed based on how much we have earned. Uh, accrued interest is typically another form Interest is something that uh, we're going to have to pay periodically based on any agreement within the loan terms that we have made. Those loan terms might be that the payments are right close to the end of the year or the end of the month, and they might line, line up per perfectly, meaning we make the payment, we record the interest at the time we made the payment, and everything lines up. But very often, that's not the case. The interest payment schedule, the amortization schedule, the way the loan is set up, uh, the accrued interest, those are going to be some interest that we've accrued, meaning we've used money through a loan and have not yet recorded the rent on that money, the interest expense, and we'll have to record that as part of our adjusting process. So the adjusting process will typically look something like this. This would be the wages payable, where we're going to debit wages payable and credit, I mean, we're going to debit wages expense and credit wages payable for the amount of wages that and workers have earned, but have not yet been recorded as of the end of the time period. So for example, if we pay people every Friday, payroll pays them on Friday, records five days of work on Friday. And if the end of the time period landed on Thursday, we'll say, then we got, we've got four days that happened in the prior month. And then one day is gonna, gonna happen after the end of the year. So they're gonna get paid after the cutoff date but most of the time worked happened before the cutoff date therefore we got to represent as of the cutoff date the date of the financial statements that there's a liability and an added related expense increase in the liability increase in the expenses for the days worked that have not yet been paid as of the cutoff date last day of the month or year we all we then have next type of adjusting journal entry accrued revenue revenue earned but not recorded so that's typically going to be a little this one is confusing many times in that the journal entry is going to look just like a normal journal entry and therefore it often 10 looks like an error it's not an error uh, it could be a typical part of the uh, process of the accounting process meaning that something like we could think of a law firm or a bookkeeping firm uh, that has to basically compile information before they send out the invoice. Just like with payroll, we don't want to mess with that process. It's difficult enough already. Just let the process be what it is. The invoice goes out when it goes out. We record the revenue at that time. Then in the adjusting process, we're going to say, hey, all those invoices that went out the first you know, week after the cutoff date, when was the work done? Was it work done before the cutoff date? If it was, we're gonna to have to do that same journal entry and bring it before the cutoff date. Uh, the, the same is gonna be true for accrued interest revenue. And that's gonna be something if we have investments in stocks and bonds, then it's very possible that those investments have accrued interest that has not yet been paid to us and therefore we have not yet recorded it as of the adjustment date 
we're gonna have to record for that. So here's the journal entry, uh, typical journal entry. We're gonna debit uh, accounts receivable and credit revenue. And for a service company, that's, that's just the normal transaction when we give out an invoice and we just do work. So again, it looks normal. We increase the amount of people owing us money with the debit and we increase revenue. When we invoice the client, that's just our normal journal entry. So the question often is, why didn't the accounting department do this? Why is this an adjusting entry? What's the difference between this as an adjusting entry and just the normal journal entry that looks just like this? The only difference is timing. The only difference is this invoice that we recorded was sent out after the cutoff date, even though the work was done before the cutoff date. And again, that's not may not be an error on the accounting department's side, but uh, in the adjusting process, we have to bring that back and we got to record it as of the end of the financial statement. And therefore, we're doing the same journal entry as of the end of the financial statement. By the way, you might be saying, hey, that's going to cause a problem later on. And as of the financial statement dates, we're just trying to make them correct on an accrual basis. And we'll talk about how to fix <laughs> fix the problem of having this recorded twice as of the, as of the date of the invoice uh, here and with payroll and some of the other entries that you might be asking that question about. Right now, we're just trying to get the financial statements right. And we're going to have to deal with that kind of tension between the adjusting process and the normal accounting process later. So the types of adjusting journal entries are going to include prepaid expense, unearned revenue, uh, accrued expenses, and accrued revenue.